Sinister, glad to hear your mom made it through the other side of COVID. Happy to have you with us. What's up, Sinister? Sam Greenwood, the donk. Only a donk would raise ace queen under the gun. I don't care off what suit. you say, Joe. <laughs> ace queen off from under the gun. Malta with a legit hand this time in the small blind. King 10 suited. And can it with a suited ace. Eyeballing the debt. Just look at him drooling over the dead money of the small blind, realizing he probably just has to call against the under the gun raids from Greenwood, but. Yeah, exactly. He looked to his right and went, oh, this is a good spot. Ah, oh, wait, this is okay. Yeah, Sam's still in the pot under the gun there, so. And fun flop here. Moth, uh, once again, flopping huge against the flush draw. Yeah, we've seen him fade that before, Joe. I know you wanted some lessons on fading flush draws, but. If uh, he does it again, I will bow down to Fabian Mota. And once again, it checks through. Turn card is a three ball. One of the most pure bricks I've ever seen. Okay. Affects absolutely nothing. Vegan Savage is predicting Mota will check raise. So far, we've seen checks. And it could be the reason why can it check through on the flop, trying to avoid he a semi-blush. He can it help himself to bet. <laughs> now we do see a bet. Greenwood likely to bounce, I think, at this point. Oh, no. Going to get a little sticky here on the turn. And Mata has got to be loving this. Not check raising right now. Yeah, not check raising, Joe. But I this Fabian Mott, he sure doesn't like betting, I guess. I mean, jeez, he's got the old King 10. It seems like this would be a bet, right? Like, yeah, it does. Don't you want to bet this? You could even argue back to the flop that, that he could lead the flop yeah. with trip 10s in this configuration of players when Greenwood opens under the gun. Greenwood's going to check back with a lot of hands, including over pairs, some of the time at least, right? Absolutely. I got to tell you, more surprising than Fabian Mott not leading the flop to me is Mustafa Kanat not deciding to bet on the flop where he probably knows Green was checking this board a lot. And it puts himself in a weird spot to, to check call here or something like that. So I'm surprised that he doesn't bet. Yeah, he could really generate some fold equity with a, a pot that matters to his stack already. He's right. the short stack heading in here. And the nut flush draw is not really afraid of that much. Yeah, the nut flush draw can rock and roll with 26 blinds or whatever he has. Yeah. But neither bets the flop. But I think more surprisingly is is Mott not betting the turn. Yes. Right? He, he gets the kind of miracle turn card, right? The three of spades is an incredible turn card for King 10 here. There's so many bad cards that kill action or screw you. And instead, safety. Yeah. Now, like, everybody's checked the flop. Greenwood included, which means sometimes, sure, Greenwood has a slow play that's got you beat. But overall, Greenwood is unlikely to have that. He's got a hand like he has or he's got an over pair that's a bit afraid of the paired tens. We want to maximize value from Greenwood and from Canada when we can. It feels like betting is the way to do that. By the way, we get to set the price that we, we bet if we were the better, whereas we see Canada bets pretty small. Yeah, it feels like this is a pretty straightforward bet. Also, then you like you. I'm so worried, especially being out of position that if we were to check here, which we do, um, and even if we check call, it's really hard to get more value on the river. Yeah, it all gets weird. Yep. So instead, by betting, now we can have missed draws. We can have this. We can have that. We can have a nine even in bet. We can have maybe even a worse hand than nine because we were the caller from the small blind. We can have, if we had two sevens or two eights or something like that, we'd probably bet as well. Um, we can get value from a nine. 
Maybe value from a, a Sam Greenwood uh, checked over pair on the flop. Maybe Kenneth has a weaker 10, which sure, he yes. might bet himself, but why don't we set the price, you know? Yeah. Why do, and why don't we set the price against the draws too? We want to make Kenneth or Greenwood uncomfortable if they have draws. We don't want them to draw for cheap, which they effect, the Kenneth effectively is by betting 6,500 here. It's going to be hard to get a lot of value no matter what if we check, right? Because if we if this checks through again, which is very reasonable that it could check through again, it doesn't as it turns out people have something. But then the river comes and either nothing comes and it's unless we're cooling Mustafa, generally we're not going to get value. Um, or a scare card comes. By the way, a club would be bad for us. And then we don't get value. So it just feels like betting is way better. Yep. But Kenneth does the betting because, of course, it checks to him and it makes tons of sense for him to try to rep a 10 here. Yeah, of course. Um, and even a nine, he could be repping and Greenwood might fold some hands, yeah. which, by the way, Greenwood doesn't fold yeah. with ace queen. This yeah. feels like an odd decision with Mott behind. He must really believe that Mott would have bet the turn with any kind of real hand. I would believe that, too. Sure. So he, it's, he's treating this almost as if Mott is no longer in the hand. He has been blipped out of existence by Thanos. And in five years, maybe we'll see him. But right now, it's just him and Sam Greenwood. And he thinks... Sam Greenwood and Sam Greenwood? <laughs> yes, it's Sam Greenwood in the mirror dimension. Yeah. It's the multiverse of madness. Everything Marvel. No, um, it's him and Mustafa. And he just thinks, I would check this board on the flop. Or if I check this board on the flop and we're heads up and the three of spades comes and Mustafa bets, I'm just calling with ace queen. Because it's freaking Mustafa? Because it's Mustafa. That's the only possible answer I have. Yeah, but we are three three ways. We, we can't really blip Mott out of existence. As we see, sometimes he's actually going to have something... And by the way, Mustafa could sometimes have something. Yes. And by the way, we have the Queen of Clubs. That's a pretty bad card to have. That's one of Mustafa's main bluff cards. We block all the bluffs with the Queen of Clubs. It feels like it's a bit too ambitious to call with Ace Queen here, especially with the Queen of Clubs. Yeah. Especially three ways. I don't know about this. I think the whole Mustafa canitness of the situation probably clouded Greenwood's judgment here. I mean, it's possible Greenwood's plan also was to call here, have Mott fold because his nothing, which turns yeah. out he doesn't have that, and then to call a lot of rivers as well because I can't imagine we're calling to fold a lot of rivers, right? I don't know. I, I don't know what we're doing. Who knows? Who knows? We're never going to really get to find out, right? Because no. Mott's going to stay in the hand and then right. Greenwood's going to have to be done with it. Greenwood now is like, what did I do when so as as Mott calls? How should Mott stay in the hand? Did he do it the right way or should he be raising now? I'm worried about... Mott's image if he were to raise meaning that he doesn't look like the kind of guy who if he were to check raise three ways on this turn on this board isn't going to have a monster yeah and if he's got a monster we may fold out very good second best hands that we really wouldn't want to fold out i.e. if Mustafa's got a 10 Mustafa may fold jack 10 here on yep. the turn right or maybe even queen 10 if we suddenly check raise because I mean Mustafa may go with it because he's short um, but if Mustafa has a 10, we're getting a lot of value out of that, usually anyway, although there are some scare cards, of course, that can come on the river. I don't think a check raise is going to really accomplish what we want here. No, I think we actually might fold out those 10s that you said, which yeah. is all back to why I wanted to lead in the first place. Exactly. We can tell a weaker story with a strong hand. That sounds pretty good to me. I Absolutely. Like, as soon as we check raise, the gig is up. Right. So I think calling is fine. Yep. Now, that, now that we're here, I just would have preferred if we led. Agreed. Agreed. Agreed is what you're going to be saying when you get on Nitro Betting and you're like, Agreed, Poker Guys, this is amazing. Agreed, Poker Guys, I love it here. Use the link in our pinned tweet to sign up for Nitro Betting. That's where the Poker Guys monthly tournament occurs along with all sorts of fun sports betting stuff. They have March Madness style brackets for all sorts of events. You got to check that out. It's going to be the best day of your life. Even if you've signed up previously for Nitrogen Sports to do all this stuff, you have to sign up again with Nitro Betting using our link to get it now. When you really think about it, right? Like, he hasn't really shown any interest. All of a sudden, he's calling he after. Again. He's he done it again. He did okay. it again. Everybody, we're, not, we're not worthy. <laughs> everybody log into Instagram now to see him literally bowing to the monitor. Wow. Fades it he's again. Doing it. I can confirm it's true. Check raise intensifying. <laughs> Check raise intensifies. Check raise loading. <laughs> I think when you get called in two spots there, and then you whiff this flush draw. Yeah, I mean, not, not only that, Joe, but also the jack is such a significant card here, yeah. right? Like, you know, there's tons of jack X combos that are still going to be in here. He's, He's loading up. Bet. He's loading up. Mustafa, can it? You are right. Can it help himself? Can it help himself? Snap fold from Greenwood. And a call. Just a call from Mata. Did not check raise. And can it is going to be. Well, that is called going for it. That is the Italian way, the Mustafa Canet way. Mussolini! 
<laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? I don't know. <laughs> I think that. So, this is the type of thing we see Mustafa Kana do. Yeah. A lot in his career. He really goes for it in places that other players won't. And the thing I'm referring to is that it's still three ways on the river, which is a time that most players are not going to take the ace high stab when they're super short, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So was it a good idea, and what's the thinking behind it? Okay, let's start with what the thinking behind it was, because was it a good idea is a much more complicated question. So Mustafa's sitting here, and he's thinking, uh, first of all, unless Sam has pocket jacks or pocket nines or quads, uh, he's going to be forced to fold the river pretty much all the time if I bet again. Oh, yeah, right? with Mop behind having called the turn, Greenwood is folding aces for sure. Right, so that's pretty great. That's a good start. Yeah. So we can already fold out a lot of, well, clearly hands that are almost always better than ours, right? Yeah. That's good. Okay, so the next, the second piece of this is what does Mott have and can we get him to fold it? Well, while Mott does actually have trip tens, you wouldn't necessarily think he would have a hand that strong. You'd think he'd bet that out on the turn himself. So what does he have? Well, he can have hands like 7-8 and other straight draws. Now, 7-8 gets there. Yep. By the way, king-queen gets there. Yep. So those, aren't, those are not going to fold. We don't like that. But queen-jack and king-jack are other straight draws that, that only sort of get there, right? They make top pair. And if we bet again, is Maka the kind of guy who's going to fold top pair when we bet turn and river into two opponents and we're short? I assume Mustafa thinks the answer is yes, because it feels like he's very much targeting first an overpair and then a jack. I mean, it really does feel like we're trying to dance between the raindrops with yeah. that type of play, though, because we're targeting a very specific hand. And if he has those hands, he, of course, also has the other hands you mentioned, which are king, queen and seven, eight suited. So that's problematic because those hands are certainly not going to be folding. No, we're definitely going to lose to those hands. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a guarantee. Yeah. And so I, I don't love that from that perspective. Beyond that, we don't have a perfect bluffing hand. And I think when right. we're taking such a strong line against players where they both called the turn, which means like we're really going to have to get lucky for them to both fold a lot of the time, we're going to have to mitigate how often we bluff. And having one of the major draws is not a good thing to have at this point, one of the major missed draws. It's interesting because it comes back to, do we think Ma can ever overcall the turn with a nine? If we think he can then maybe this is not the worst bluffing him. But if we think he isn't going to overcall there, then we actually want to have a nine ourselves, right? That means basically do we respect Mott or not? Because like right. a, a good player would not overcall the turn with a nine. Because Sam called. Yeah. And Sam, like, you can't really ever think Sam has ace-queen. He, he does, really but does. yeah. You just can't think that. You think he's got jacks or kings or something, right? A nine is a good card to bring up because I think if Kenneth wants to take this line and wants to turn this spot into a bluff, a nine is a good type of hand to do it with because we block a lot of full houses that are possible out there and we don't block the draws that missed. Right. right. So I think that would be a better hand to do that with than actually blocking the draws that missed with the ace four of clubs. I think that's a bit problematic. The ace four of clubs ain't great to have here. Um, worse still would be having, I think, a king or a queen in your hand because then you're blocking queen jack or king jack. So we don't have that. That's good. Clubs is a little problematic. It is. I think Mustafa is much like Icarus and often flies a bit too close to the sun. <laughs> and this is one of those times. Greenwood obviously folds, no problem, with the ace-queen. But, of course, Mott has to put the chips in with the 10. Of course he does. And it's interesting because, ultimately, Mustafa puts himself in this spot where he's, by betting this river and getting and losing, he's down to about 10 blinds. Where he'd be called and, or sorry, where he just to win the pot, of course, if the bluff got through... Now he'd be at like 33 blinds. So it's a, it's a big inflection point for him in this tournament to even pull the trigger on this bluff. It is, but he could have just not pulled the trigger and had 20 blinds. Exactly. And Mustafa Kennett with 20 blinds is a lot more dangerous than Mustafa Kennett with 10. And that's another reason maybe not to do it without the perfect combo. Yeah. You know, just because no one, Mott just didn't show any aggression at any point. I think he's just sitting there thinking like, this guy just doesn't have a strong hand almost ever. I think I can get him to fold the jack. Right? Yeah. I think that's what it is. Just like Mussolini used to do. Just like him and Icarus. Should Mustafa have gone for it on the river? That's probably the biggest question. Yes, Mott makes a very passive line here, but Mustafa, in the face of that, decides to go for it. Is that the right call or not? You know, you know what we think, but what do you think? Let us know in the comments. Check out our Discord. It's a party over there. There's a link in the description. We'll see you there. Okay.